So this is just a quick video showing off my recreation of the muscle shell tool that was built by Judd Simontov at Naughty Dog. Basically how it works is we have pairs of locators and, by, and we measure the distance in between them in order to drive the bulging of a muscle sheet. A joint is attached to the muscle sheet and is bound to the actual mesh and that is how we achieve better volume preservation through the use of this tool. So we're going to dive into the node editor and take a look at how this works under the hood. So I'm just going to be looking at this pair of locators, but it's the same for the other side. So the first thing that we do is we take those two locators and we measure the distance between them. Then we take that distance and divide it by the original distance in between them. I store that original distance here on this muscle node, which is just an empty group named muscle, where I have a Y start length and a G start length for the yellow and green locators. Then, now that I have that ratio, I raise it to the power of the bulge factor. The bulge factor is another attribute on this muscle node. As you can see right now, the bulge factor is set to negative one. So when I do this, it bulges about this much. But if I were to come over here and increase the factor, the bulge would be more exaggerated. If I were to decrease it, the bulge would become less exaggerated. So that gives you some customization of, um, as to the behavior of the muscle sheet. Then we take the output from that node and we plug it into this one and we multiply it by the start bulge. As you can see, even when we're at the original position of all of the locators, the muscle still is bulging out slightly and we can adjust that bulge using the start bulge attribute on the muscle node. The output from that multiplication node is then plugged into this node called the Curve 1 Normal Scaler. Now I'm going to go back and show you where the second input comes in before I explain what goes on beyond that. So those two locators are also plugged in to drive the CVs of a linear curve. And it will turn on the visibility for that. So you can see that when I move this locator this linear curve follows along with it. That curve and the one that is created on the other side by the other pair of locators are then lofted in order to create a NURB surface. I don't actually have the NURB shape in the viewport, I just have the node being used here in the node editor. But I can come in and loft those two in order to show what that surface would look like in order to make it more visual. and then I will apply a shader. So that is the surface that is created by the lofting of those two linear curves. Then what I do is I use a point on surface info node to take the midpoint of the curve and query the normal and position on the surface at that point. Then I take the normal vector at that point and I multiply it by the output from that bulge malt node. So basically what I'm doing is as the locators get closer and closer together, that vector is getting scaled up using this multiplication node and the, and the surface is pushed out in that direction. The way that we create that surface and the pushing effect is using this node. I add together the scaled vector and the position on the flat surface with a plus minus an average node. I then plug in the output from that into the CV position of a quadratic curve, a degree two curve, for the second CV. The two endpoints are still driven by the two locators. Then I take the new bulged curve for this pair of locators and that pair of locators and I loft them together to create this final surface. In order to get the joint attached to the surface, I use a point on surface info node. Using the point on surface info node, I get the point on the middle by putting in 0.5 and 0.5 for the two parameters. And I take the position, normal vector, and tangent v vector and plug it into a 4x4 four four matrix. The 4x4 four four matrix basically takes these vectors 
and will be used to orient a locator along those vectors. In order to get this locator to work in any hierarchy, I then have to take the matrix out of this 4x4 matrix and multiply it by the parent inverse matrix of the locator, which I've named rivet. Then I take the matrix sum, so the product of those two matrices, put it into a decomposed matrix node in order to get an output rotate and output translate, and plug those in to the translate and rotate attributes of the rivet itself. This part might seem cyclical, but in fact the parent inverse matrix is not affected by the translate rotate and scale on this node itself. It is only affected by the transforms of the parent and the transforms that are higher than the parent in the hierarchy. And that is my recreation of Jude Sinmentov's muscle tool. Right now, another rigger named Haley Zuddy is working on a script to create this more quickly so we can do some tests with it and see in what ways we can improve it and how to make it more useful for riggers.